to thank for six of those wins after playing them on the road five times. Bowden at last had the Tigers in his own backyard. Well, the expected win happened, but as Scott Atwell tells us, it was not all candy and roses. It was the game that ended Bobby Bowden's quest for 200, but it will also be remembered as the game that ended with a brawl. Well, it's just a shame. I mean, LSU and Florida State played about as clean a game as I'd seen. Their, their kids were patting ours on the back, and ours was patting them on the back, and first thing I know, it was a free-for-all out there. The fisticuffs broke out in two different locales, beginning with a sideline shot on the game's final play. Kirk Carruthers was flagged for a late hit, but he says the quarterback was still in bounds. One of the offense linemen came out and uh, felt that, you know, I had hit him late, which uh, it, it was clearly a good hit, and uh, tried to attack me. They did throw a flag. It wasn't at me, though. Yeah, it was on the hit. Oh, oh yeah? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm going to watch the film tonight. I, to me, I felt I like I was still about if, if you just get totally whipped on the field, um, I don't think you should take actions like that. Just accept it. And uh, I guess they, they wouldn't, because we, 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 I already know that they're a nasty team anyway. If LSU was frustrated, they had plenty of reason. It began on the game's first play when the Tigers fumbled away the opening kickoff. FSU recovered at the 16. A short time later, turnover number two. Chad Loop dropped by Bill Rakins. The Seminoles recover at the seven. Then just before the half, turnover number three. Loop thrown for a loop by Reggie Freeman. It was Florida State's ball at the 38. Basically, our quarterbacks held the ball too long. Instead of throwing the ball to the receiver or just throwing it away, we held it too long. They were legitimate fumbles. And all three of the turnovers led to Florida State touchdowns. Fumble number one turned into Amp Lee's nine-yard scamper. Fumble number two was cashed in by Lee again, this time from six yards out. And fumble number three turned into a Hail Mary that came as time expired in the first half. said in the huddle I said listen now don't let me have a cheap interception on this play right here because you see it so often and uh Shannon Baker said shoot an interception we're gonna score a lot of times you see on TV all three of the receivers jump up for the ball and the ball lands so close by me somebody could have made a play so I just told two guys jump I stay on the ground and it came right to me there was little wonder that Florida State had the confidence to go deep Sandwiched in between the turnover touchdowns, the Tribe put together a 99-yard drive without the aid of LSU. Weldon to Matt Fryer. Pass interference was called, but it wasn't needed. And Weldon, in his first career start, finished with 229 yards on 15 completions. This drive was capped by, who else? Ampley, who scored three times, but was unimpressed with his effort. I scored the touchdowns, but I don't, I don't feel as though I played the best I could have played. Um, after looking back on the game, I found out that I need to work on some things that I haven't been working on in practice. LSU, meanwhile, managed Here's only a first quarter field goal attention. as the Seminole defense now limited the Tigers to only 207 total yards. Carruthers led the way with 13 tackles. I've come from uh, the doghouse to the penthouse, there's no doubt about it. The last two weeks, I felt I played better. Uh, today, I wanted to go all out. Um, I learned that I made the top 10 for the finalists in the Buckus. Um, I want to prove the country that I, I am I am one of the greatest linebackers in the country. Well, Bobby Bowden's success over LSU has nothing to do with Tiger Stadium after all. He can beat him right here in Tallahassee just as well. And finally, Florida State's coach has his two... Florida State University.